Hello, um, I thought I would make a video for y'all and um, have it about just the way, it's going to be about the way that the Holy Ghost actually instructs us and leads us into truth. So I thought it would be good to start with Isaiah chapter 29 because, you know, some people sometimes feel that they're too stupid to learn and then sometimes people... Um, arrogantly act like they know way more than they actually do. So let me just get here. So I'm going to start in Isaiah 29 verse 10. And it says, For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, hath he covered. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed which men delivered to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. You know, he's saying, I, it's, um, you're going to have to get some revelation to be able to understand this. <laughs> and the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. I haven't learned how to read or anything, so I can't read this. And it says, Wherefore the Lord say, said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. And um, in the, the, I believe it's like the Jewish Bible Society, um, in their version of the Bible, it says, By rote. So um, saying something over and over again, like you got to fear the Lord, you got to fear the Lord, you got to fear the Lord. And then someone can just regurgitate it and say, well, you got to fear the Lord, but they don't actually fear the Lord. You see, because um, just as it says at the end of Ecclesiastes, it says that um, this is the whole duty of man, fear God and keep the commandments, right? So um, I want to go and now, and I'm just going to flip over here to... Let me see, let me see. Um, I'll flip over here to Luke 10, 21, where it says, In that hour Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them unto babes, even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. So, um, as you can see right here, it says that he he hid these things from the wise and prudent and has revealed, revealed them unto babes. You know, people who don't know anything. Babes don't know anything, right? So, um, that's the thing is the Holy Spirit is what guides us and teaches us, right? <laughs> so, um, we'll go over here to... John 14, 15, and 16, those are some, that's easy to remember because they're all back to back, just John 14, 15, and 16. And it says, sorry, I'm kind of flipping wildly here. Okay, let me see. Okay, John 14, 17 says, all right, we'll start in, we'll start in, John 14, verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. And, um... So God gives us a new spirit to where we're interested in the law and we love God's law and cherish it. Um, let me see. I wanted to see. I know some of these chapters go a little deeper. So I'll go, I'll go ahead and go into um, John 15, 26, where it says, But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. So the Holy Spirit will speak of Jesus Christ when he comes into your life. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. Okay, John 16, and verse 13, it says, Howbeit when the Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. 
not a man, not someone telling you what you got to do and what you should be doing, but God will make you interested in Him and make you desire to seek Him, and He will make things known to you because He's God and He loves His people. For He shall not speak of Himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things that come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. And let me see. I just wanted to, I know there's a little more on that in these sections but because of the camera I'm trying to um, just keep it moving along so let's go to Acts 4 verse 13 it says now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus so they were unlearned and ignorant men. You know, it's okay to be unlearned. It's okay to be smart because that has nothing to do with revelation that the Holy Ghost gives you of Jesus Christ. So um, <clears throat> we'll go over here and we'll flip on over here to 1 Corinthians. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 17 all the way through 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 2 is talking about how the wisdom of this world is um, has nothing to do with what you're able to comprehend and learn about Jesus Christ. So, honestly, I don't even know where to begin, really. I mean, let me just skim through here real quick. So he says, not with wisdom of words, in, verse, in chapter 1 verse 17, we're in 1 Corinthians, Chapter 1, verse 17, so not with wisdom of words. And then in verse 18, uh, the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. And then in verse 19, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Um, verse 20, where is the wise, where is the scribe, where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Um, verse 21, for after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. And then um, it says that what the Jews desired and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. And it, I mean, it just goes on and on. So just read 1 Corinthians 1, 17 through chapter 3, verse 2. I'm going to go ahead and go on. So, um, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. It says, Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. And ye are Christ, and Christ is God's. We're all one in Jesus Christ, right? So, um, Second Peter chapter let me see um I ac sorry I accidentally put the wrong verse um so it's actually second peter chapter 1 verse 20 and 21 knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So the people in this Bible, the apostles and the prophets, were moved by the Holy Ghost. Just like the Holy Ghost is what reveals the knowledge in the, of this book to us. Anyone can read this book. Pagans make fun of this book all the time. It's not doing anything for an unbelieving pagan. But if you believe in Jesus Christ, 
then this book will actually serve you well and it will actually benefit you as being a believer but that doesn't mean that there wasn't scribal errors and that there's even an autographed copy and none of that has anything to do with um, believing the Holy Ghost is what cuts into you and will make you start seeking truth and understanding that Christ will give to those who belong to him and all too many times people think you have to go through men who are gonna be hey give me some money I'm teaching you right <laughs> you know it's like robbery um, it's like when Jesus whipped the people out with the money changers right out of the temple a bunch of people trying to make money off of believers so um, we'll go to John chapter 6 verse 45 it says it is written in the prophets and they shall be all taught of God every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me so they shall all be taught of God and um let me see let me see um john 7 verse 15 says and the jews marveled saying how knoweth this man letters having never learned the holy spirit um you know yahweh became flesh in the person of jesus christ right so um you know, he didn't have to learn. He already knew everything. He was God on earth. Um, so let me see. And just, you know, along the lines of your body being the temple, which contains the Holy Ghost, which teaches you um, Romans um, chapter 12, verse 6. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophecy, according to the proportion of faith or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. And um, Romans chapter 12 explains to you just the way that um, the different gifts that are given I'm um, sorry I didn't I actually didn't mean to read that one in this I'll do a video on that later um, um, 1st Corinthians 12 Romans chapter 12 Ephesians chapter um, 4 talk about the different administrations that the Holy Spirit gives believers so um, The, more on the um, us being the house of the Holy Spirit, and that's what guides us and teaches us. Um, chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. And I had actually read some of that earlier. The next, the next goes on to say about how he takes the wise in their own craftiness. Um, First Corinthians chapter twelve says, um, "Sorry, I wasn't." Let me see. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11, But all these worketh that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. And I mean, there's so many verses that speak to the way that we're the house of the Holy Spirit that it's hard to miss. I mean, there's just so many. If you read, you'll definitely find them. Let me see. Um, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. 
and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth up in holy temple in the Lord. Know ye not that your body is a temple? Temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Habitation of God. Um, let me see. Um, more on that. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Um, I apologize if I'm sometimes I get confused because I'm actually meant to um, mark all of these places, and sometimes I forgot to circle the verses. I mark the pages so I have um, a little work to do there. So this is about being taught of God. First Thessalonians chapter four. And again, I forgot to mark the page. Let me see. Okay, um, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 9. But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. So, um... I, I'm going to end it there. I know I've been going for about 15 minutes now, so, um, and I just circled that verse in my Bible. Uh, um, you know, I mark the pages and usually circle the verse, but sometimes I forget. And sometimes I have multiple things on that page that I've marked, so I get a little confused. So, all right, I hope that that helped, guys. I hope that y'all um, understand a little more now about your body being the temple of God and God dwelling in you. So I appreciate y'all taking the time to listen. Bye.